Welcome to the program Finances, a very good evening. It's a pleasure to be back with you in one more program to pass to you the faith, the spirit, the assurance and the conviction that the faith and the word of God is the same because God is the same of yesterday, of today and forever. And you know, when the word of God mentioned that, that God is the same of yesterday, today and forever, God is saying that that doesn't matter the situation and the problem that you are going through, there is solution for it. And that solution is God. God is the solution for all problems. That's why I would like you to stay with us and watch the testimony, this wonderful testimony of Miss Daisy, that she arrived at the UCKG Help Center full of problems. She was a single mother. She was full, feeling a lot of having a lot of troubles in her life. And today she found the faith. Today she is happily married. Her son is blessed. Her family is blessed. Her financial life is completely changed. Because when God fulfills his promise, my dear viewer, God doesn't fulfill it for a while or for just a, a specific area of people's life. But God does that to make the person to be the blessing, like he did with Abraham. And we're going to be talking more about that in a few moments. I would like you just to watch this story. And if you'd like to talk to us, if you are facing uh, problems, if you have a difficult moment, you'd like to talk to someone, you'd like a prayer, you can call us. You have our telephone number, 0861212155. Or you can send us a message here through the Facebook or through our, web, our, our WhatsApp. You are uh, available. You have three ways, three ways that you can reach us. And if you need to talk to someone, we'll be available for you. Okay? Watch the testimony of this lady. We'll be back right with you. Every area of my life, I would say that is complete. I've been married for 12 years now, and I'm really happy married. And the way I see my son focus now, he's really focused, he, he loves what he's doing. And I'm so pleased to see him. And my financial life today, I'm working the place I want to work. It's something that I'm very happy with. But it wasn't always like this. The struggle that I was facing as a, a single mom was loneliness. And I was on my own. I felt like nobody would want me because I've got the child. My self-esteem went really, really low. I, I didn't believe in myself. So I was like, there's nothing more to be done. Who will look at me? I have to work long hours to uh, manage even the rent which, where we were. So I didn't have time with him. So that contributed into him being away or doing whatever he was doing because all the stuff that I was not monitoring or was not supervising him, he was doing what he wanted to do. Sometimes, you know, it's difficult as a parent, especially a single parent. You're going out, you're doing things, but you don't have time to talk. When you sit down to talk to them, you realize they really need you, but you don't have time. Okay, I've provided food, go and sleep, you know, that kind of thing. So when I came to church, I was taught how to use my faith. For me, faith was a big word. How am I using my faith? And that's when we had helpers and explained to her how you're going to do practical things. For example, how am I going to bond with my son so that he will be able to listen and will be able to be this family that we're looking for. When you talk to them, you realize that they really need to talk. They really need to express themselves. They really want to hear your voice. So that helps because it was quite practical because I was not doing all those things. And for me, that helps to um, change and direct my son who he is today. So then I started attending uh, Love Life meetings, which were, we were told, you know, people like me who lost hope. And one of the things that I really, when I went in, one of the things I really want to know, how can I build myself up? How can I build, bring back my self-esteem? Because I didn't have no self-esteem at all. And through those meetings, that's when we were told to love ourselves. And for me, it was like, how? And, you know, the simple things, even the way you dress, the way you look, the way you smell. And through those meetings, I realized, you know what, I can't build up, I can't come up back. And I started building my self-confidence. And that's when I met my husband. And today we are happily married for 12 years. <laughs> and I'm happy. What I can say today is that don't lose hope. There is a way out. And most people think it's over. 
as I was thinking, I was in the same situation. But today I'm happily married, I've got a lovely son, my financial life has changed. So there is hope if you look for one. You see that today Miss Daisley, she is blessed and she is the living testimony. The promise of God was fulfilled. But have you noticed that today she has a completely life? Have you noticed that today she, she didn't just mention about one specific area? Today she is totally fulfilled. Her life is totally blessed. And the most important thing was not uh, the things that she conquered, such as blessing the love life, blessing the family, blessing the financial life, but is the, the faith, the spirit, the happiness that is inside of her. When you look to her, you see that she is totally fulfilled. And maybe you are watching me, and that has been your problem. You have some areas of your life or some places in your life or some areas of your life that you are okay. You, you, you cannot complain. Sometimes your marriage, you can't complain. Sometimes your financial life, you have even a good condition, but still needs or still missing happiness, still missing, you know, joy. Sometimes you carry inside of you a happiness or... or Oh, I'm sorry, you carried inside of you a sadness, this is what I mean, a sadness that makes you to feel depressed. And sometimes you look around and you ask yourself, I have everything, but I don't have nothing. You know, what you need is the presence of God. That's why I would like to invite you, for you to join us. I'm not here to invite you for a church. I'm here to invite you for a God that is able to change your life. Here in Stockholm, we have our doors open. At Birger Josgotten 106, where we have daily services at 10 o'clock in the morning and also at uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. And you are our guest to join us. If you'd like more information, you may visit our website, www.uckg.se. And there you're going to have information about our, our works, our prayers that we have here in Sweden and also in Scandinavia and also throughout the world. You are our guest. Watch more stories of people who overcame through the faith and we'll be back with you straight after. I started hearing voices when I was 20 years old. It's something I didn't ask for nor did I expect. It just came upon me like that, basically. I couldn't control them. They took over my whole life. I've been in the, in the church for four years now and in these four years I was always up and down in my spiritual life. A couple of months I'll be okay and then all of a sudden I'm down again. So I got to a point where I was on lots of medication and the schizophrenia, the voices in my head would control my life. I got to a point where I couldn't leave and put my head down to rest or close my eyes without basically screaming because the voices in my head were taking control. Um, of everything. I did many things on my spiritual life but it just wasn't seen to be moving forward. So in my family, um, I come from a background where I've had witchcraft done in my family. Um, I was abused when I was young so there was a lot of things that I kept inside, a lot of things that I didn't realise I hadn't fought against, many things that I realised I didn't overcome. Um, I started drinking alcohol and this became a very severe problem at the time and I would even start drinking in the, in the afternoon as early as four o'clock in the afternoon and I'd start drinking at home on my own just to drown the voices out and this became a daily routine with me. I would drink, I'd go to the off license, buy the cheapest wine, beer, cigarettes, stay at home and just drink by myself just to block these voices out. In the previous campaign that we took part in, I decided to really go for it for my spiritual life. And um, I remember for the first week already, I was defeated because I had so many doubts. So many voices are saying, well, you've done so many campaigns. Look where you are. Four years in the church, you've done many campaigns, but you're still here. So what makes you think this campaign is going to be different? So I had to fight that. And then as well, I was trying to go around the places to build up my sacrifice, but doors were really closed. Nothing was moving forward for me. This campaign was really, really hard. 
I tried everything to stop these voices, down to medication, herbal med medication, acupuncture, and even went to witch doctors to stop the voices in my head, but nothing worked. Everything just seemed impossible for me. And I thought I would be living in this hell basically the rest of my life. It was really, really hard, but I kept going because I knew what I wanted from God. I knew that I'd had enough of my spiritual life, always up and down in the church. I listened to the pastor and the assistants and what they told me to do, I did it. I wanted to be free and I believed, I believed that I would be free if I, if I made a chain of prayer and basically if I just used my faith. It was impossible for these voices to go because it was impossible for me to ever, to ever get rid of these voices. I thought I have, if I do this and use my faith, they will go. God has to do something. I kept going because I knew what I wanted from God. I knew that I'd had enough of my spiritual life, always up and down in the church. So I did that part and I was also fasting. I was doing long hours, like 12 hours, because I'm a person, I never liked fasting. I did not like fasting. So I would fast for 12 hours. I would pray in the night. I would do things that I just didn't like doing before. And he did. Today I'm free. I'm not addicted to alcohol. I don't have to take medication, and above all, I do not hear any voices inside my head. After I kept on fighting and going, I overcame the abuse of the past. I overcame the feelings that I had towards men. I was no longer afraid of men. I was no longer, no longer tensing, like I would tense. If men come near me, I'll be afraid of them. So all of that went. I overcame my complexes. I overcame many things that were stopping me from moving along, um, moving in life. Today I'm a different person, I'm happy, no longer depressed, I'm also able to advise others as I'm an assistant in the church. Um, I am just so pleased that God has helped me, my faith has helped me, and if it helped me, it can help you. <laughs> The campaign really does work because God has changed me today. The person, the Tanaka that I was about four months ago, two years ago, is not the Tanaka that you see here today. So the campaign really works and I'm very happy. My dear viewer, you know, this is what God desires to do in your life, to make you to be the blessing. When we read the Bible, if you have a Bible, you may read it there. Genesis 24, verse 1, speaks about Abraham. Abraham, he was an advantage in years, but he was blessed in everything. You know, that is what God wants to do. God doesn't want just to uh, help you in an area. God wants to give you a new life. And we are waiting for you. The same way that those people's life change, you can be the next one. Join us here in Stockholm, Birger has got 106, so any part of the world where you are watching me, there is a door of the Universal Church that is open for you. And surely that more than the church, there is a God that is waiting for you. More information, visit our website, www.uckg.se. It was a pleasure to be with you. May the Lord of the Bible bless you all. And until next time, and I'm sure that next time, you will be the living testimony. Have a good night. Bye-bye.